Okay, part two. So then I'm, I'm in the floor. I'm, I'm just overcome with peace. And I get up and I, I just was in awe. I, I was in awe because I had never read this before. And I was painting these things that I'd never read before. And I didn't know why I was painting them. I was compelled to paint them. I was not going to church. I was not talking to anybody, wasn't watching any videos about God. I was being a hellion, to be honest. I mean, I was not in any way spiritual at the time. Um, but God loved me anyway. And he still used these things and showed me these things so he could wake me up, right? It was pretty dramatic, in my opinion. Um, it shook me awake. And so the next morning, something miraculous happened. So I had been taking pain medication for almost 25 years. For my back, I had surgery when I was 27. And I had been in pain since I was about 17. Um, I had severe degenerative disc disease and... I managed the addiction. I didn't take anyone else's medication. I had my own prescription, but and I didn't overtake my prescription, but I had to have that daily dose or else I was not going to feel good. And so the next morning when I woke up, something in me just knew I did not need them anymore. I went to my cabinet. I went to the cabinet and I pulled all the medicines out and I flushed them all down the toilet. And when I say all, there was only one that was a narcotic pain medication. The others were like anti-inflammatories and muscle relaxers and all these things. And I wasn't in pain. And later on that day, I never had withdrawals. I never got shaky. I never got sick at my stomach. And I had tried to stop before, but was not able to. Um, every time I would try to stop, I would get sick at my stomach. I wouldn't be able to sleep good. I would hurt. Um, I would be grumpy and moody. And so I would just, you know, take one just so I would feel better. And so that was my life for a long, long time. And so for it not to feel that way, I knew it was like a miracle, a real life miracle. Um, I want to pause there for a second because um, I want to be really, really clear about something. So... I went to church when I was a little girl and, and off and on throughout my teenage years. And there were times that I felt close to God. I wanted, I would feel a draw, um, like a call to repentance. I was never able to fit into the role that I thought I was supposed to be as a woman in that Christian world. And so... What I didn't understand back then is that it wasn't about me fixing myself. It was about surrendering and allowing God to fix me from within. I couldn't fix myself. So this time, eight years ago, I was broken. I was, I knew I was wretched. I knew I was bad. I knew that I had done horrible things. And for a long time, I had no regret about it. But as soon as I realized that the Bible was true, that this supernatural creator, Holy Spirit, pushed me to paint something that I'd never read while I was still drinking and going to, you know, taking pain pills and going to the club and acting like a wild person. Like, he left the 99 and he came and he found me. And it doesn't make, I don't think I'm special. I'm a nobody. Like, I'm just a single mom from Arkansas, okay? I just know what he did for me. And I know that I need to share it with people. Because if he will do it for me, he will absolutely do it for anyone else. And so, anyway, I just felt like I needed to throw that in real quick. Because I'm not some, you know, I didn't go to seminary school. I'm not a theologian. I'm not a religious zealot. I'm not a judgmental beat you in the head with a Bible person. I'm just sharing my experience, what happened with me and my encounter with God. 
and so and how he changed my life because in all this change that happened he did start to show me some things through dreams and visions and he did start to show me some things and reveal some things to me in the word does that make I do I call myself like a prophet no I don't um but the Bible says that he'll pour his spirit out on all flesh and his sons and his daughters will prophesy. So that's just that's not just for me. That's for everyone, all flesh. So I got healed. I got delivered of numerous things, um, in a, some things in an instant. And then I just had a hunger for the word. I still didn't go to church anywhere. I didn't like feel like I needed to run off to a church. I just started going into my secret place. I started going into my room and my closet and getting in there and reading the scriptures and just praying and, and calling out to God. And it just started changing things inside of me. And I was no longer cursing. I was, and I didn't even consciously stop cursing. It just happened. Um, I it was like I stopped cursing. I stopped craving going out to the bars. I stopped wanting to do things. Did I hate or judge the people that I used to hang out with? No, I didn't cut them all off even. I shared with them what happened to me. Some of them cut themselves off from me, but some of them didn't. And so, um, yeah, I just, I, I can kind of get all over the place and I want to try to be focused here because what has happened is, what had happened was, okay, over the last seven years, through the paintings, through scripture, through dreams, through visions, I have these little notebooks that I write all these little things down in. It's like I have this pocket full of puzzle pieces, and they don't always all make sense, and so I'll just kind of like put it in my back pocket, you know, and or set it off to the side or write it in the journal, and I don't feel like a compelling need to like share it with everyone but all of a sudden over the last few days this urgency has bubbled up on the inside it wasn't because of anything i've seen it was just an urgency and several things that the lord showed me over these last seven years have started to make more sense and <laughs> You could probably hear my son. He's playing games with his friends. And he's 11. Y'all, 11 year olds say some weird stuff. They have this whole lingo that I do not comprehend. That's a whole nother story. I'm sharing the wake up call information so that you'll understand how I get to the last video that I'll make. I don't know how many parts this is going to be, but it will be a strong message that I received yesterday that pulls together a lot of the information that I have been shown over the last seven years. So I hope that makes sense. Um, if anybody has any questions, please put it in the comments and I will, um, if I miss something or if I started saying something that I didn't quite finish and you want more elaboration on it, please feel free to ask me in the comments and I will reply and make some videos. Um, so, yeah, I think this will probably be the last one I do for the night because it's getting kind of late and I've got a few things to do. And so, um, yeah, that's all for the night. Please come back for part three.